Hello everybody. So, I really enjoy designing ships in Space Engineers, and I really enjoy looking into the best ways to design these ships. I see a lot of people put together ships that they think are neat, but they don't really have any um, technical strength to them. Uh, they look nice, but they don't actually operate very well in the game world. Obviously, I think there's definitely a place for that. I mean, I put toilets in everything I build. But, um, I think it's also worth looking at some of the basic philosophies behind designing more durable ships and more useful ships. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a video on some fighter design, basic fighter design. Maybe I'll do some other videos later and if any of you have opinions and uh, data you can also chip in and we'll go ahead and try and up our game altogether. These are three fighters. They are 50,000 kilogram units. Uh, and they are quite peppy. I'm going to talk about some of the design philosophies behind them, and we're also going to go ahead and blow them up. Yay! This one is the lightest at 43,000, and it is the glass cannon, and that's a class. That's not like the name of the ship. This is the sort of thing that a lot of people design, and it's a bunch of forward-facing guns with a sleeve of armor and some stuff inside the armor. Now, the advantage of the glass cannon is the high volume of firepower it puts out and the extremely low weight. It is generally 15 to 20 percent lighter uh, than its competitors. But the disadvantage is, of course, it breaks. It dies. They can generally only take one missile hit, maybe two. Uh, before they go down. And you can see the sort of issue we're talking about here. This is only one layer of light armor, so a missile hit against the side here can easily destroy the cockpit. A second missile hit against the side will definitely destroy the cockpit. A lot of people have tried to put heavy armor layers on top of it to try and make it stronger, but then you just slow it down and it becomes worse. Um, heavy armor is a, never a good idea on fighters. I mean, theoretically, maybe someone could manage it, but generally speaking, it does not have, uh, uh, it's, it's not a good combination of function and protection. We'll talk about how to do it better in a little bit here. Basically, if you build a glass cannon, you're going to get a glass cannon. You're not going to be able to add enough armor to fix that problem. The big part of this ship that everyone overlooks is the nose. People think of the nose as a weak point, but it's actually the only part of the glass cannon that is armored. A missile that hits anywhere along here is probably going to destroy your cockpit. Missiles that hit back here are likely to destroy your reactors and will definitely destroy your engines. But a missile that hits the tip of a gun will explode there and take out only that one gun, maybe the gun next to it. So the reason that these guns are staggered like this in this shape is because if a missile hits one of these guns, it's likely to take out only one gun. So if you're in a glass cannon, you should always be pointed into the fire of your enemy. The idea of turning aside and trying to dodge is foolish. You always want to stay pointed straight at your enemy. You can use your side thrusters, of course, go get some lateral motion, but you want missiles and guns to hit you in your guns, because those are where you're protected best. Now what if you wanted to be protected a little bit better? Well here is a dogfighter, and you might think that this design looks ugly, eh, you can probably come up with something better, but I wanted to show you uh, how you can build a dogfighter. Once again this is all light armor, and this is only a little bit heavier than that. It's bigger, but it's only a little heavier. I think it's 48,000 instead of 43,000. Uh, you can see the huge difference here is that this has these weapons nacelles where you have eight guns, two in each nacelle, rather than ten. And in addition, this ship is very slightly slower. But these nacelles are able to catch a surprising amount of missile fire and gunfire uh, and just shrug it off. Even though there's only one layer of light armor, these guns will catch whatever firepower comes in and, and count as armor. So by putting objects, in this case guns, between your vital systems and incoming fire, you can protect your vital systems. And this is a much better approach than using heavy armor. You should try to use functional systems as shields if you can. Uh, I've also used engines in this way, so you can see I've got engines in... Oh, you can't see. 
you can see I've got engines in here as well. Um, and they also count as armor. Obviously losing engines is annoying and so is losing guns, but they will not, uh, you'll not lose control of your ship as long as you have a couple of them left. Now damage from above or below is still an issue with this design, uh, but we're going to assume that you're doing mostly lateral dogfighting. This is the multi-roll. The multi-roll is a little bit heavier than those other ships. It's about 50,000 exactly, I think. And you can see that it has a very different design philosophy. It's only got two of those Gatling guns, and then it also has two super heavy guns, and a whole bunch of missiles. Now the point of this ship is to get a job done. It's intended to destroy incoming bombers, or attack frigates, or even attack uh, larger vessels, and it's not intended to engage in combat with small fighters. If a small fighter comes out to meet it, it's really supposed to more or less ignore the fighter. It's supposed to you know, try and evade, but engaging with a fighter is not a great idea with this ship. It's not really the best at that. It can. If it gets close, it can use missiles and destroy a fighter pretty quick. But in general, it's intended to take out larger targets, whatever needs to be done. And you can see that I have got these wings out, and they're not even armored. These guns have no armor on them. The reason for that is because these guns make excellent armor. If I put armor around them, I am putting a layer of armor around a layer of armor, and that's weight I can't afford. So if these guns get hit by bullets, they are just the exact perfect shape for protecting missiles and your uh, command pod from incoming gunfire. Now, a missile will blow them away, but they make good armor nonetheless because the missile will probably hit on the barrel somewhere and the rest of your ship will survive intact. The weak point of this ship is this area here. Um, we're going to be talking a lot more, uh, if I make any more fighter design videos, we're going to be talking a lot more about uh, building cockpits and the, the real answer is you mod in an AZ cockpit and you don't use any of these. Uh, but um, for now, the weak point here is definitely the direct hits against the cockpit. As you might expect, the the uh, the dogfighter here is much, much better protected against attacks against the cockpit, whereas this guy, you want to be sure not to get hit in the cockpit. You've probably been wondering what these uh, tails are. These tails are decoy tails. They make it possible to operate in environments where there are turrets, and I almost always include them on my fighters, because they are very light and effective against turrets. One of the things I also do is I generally point my engines uh, into areas where the blast damage is at the edge of actually being damaged. Um, some people consider that cheaty. I, I actually really like it. I think it makes the ships look a lot nicer. But it's up to you whether you consider that to be cheating or not. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and blow these ships up. I'm just going to adjust this so it's pointed the right way. We're going to be using this guy to blow the ships up, of course, because uh, he is the only one with missiles. There we go. So for the front rank, I'm going to show you how gunfire would normally happen. So this is a sort of generic gun. It's a little bit better than the Gatling guns that are included with your uh, uh, game. But you can see that what happens here is if I fire at the front, it destroys your guns, but your cockpit remains intact. On the other hand, if I fire on the side, it hits your cockpit almost immediately and your cockpit will last however long its armor, you know, it has a couple of, of slots before it dies out, but you're taking direct fire to your cockpit and that's not a great idea. On the other hand, this guy is pretty well protected. It takes a little bit of time to cut through and the chance of that being a sustained attack for that long is pretty, pretty unusual. Uh, this guy, as I mentioned, the cockpit will go immediately, so there's really no reason to even talk about that. But I can talk about how well these guns protect you against gunfire. Now the guns, these heavy guns are actually not very heavy, 
but you can see that they do act as armor. And then these cargo pods, I think I forgot to mention this. If you are building a ship that requires a heavy weapon, like these missiles or that heavy gun, you shouldn't try and wire your whole ship up with a heavy with heavy uh, conduits. Those things are really big and obnoxious. Instead, you should just put a medium cargo bay at the point where you need it. It counts as more armor, and it's a lot easier to deal with, and it won't screw up your ship. So that is my recommendation there. Now, let's go ahead and do some missiles. Sorry if you can hear that. Sounds like my landlady came over to shout. Do, 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 do. So how do these things fare against missile fire? As I mentioned, this one doesn't fare so well. But if you catch it directly on the guns, it will fare considerably better. For example... See? So as long as you're pointed directly at the guns, and you don't ever let it hit you anywhere else, you can survive quite a few missile hits, and you'll still have guns left intact. But as you can see, even one missile hit that's not directly on your guns, you're probably gonna die. Ooh, look at who's surviving. Nice. So the dogfighter, how well does a dogfighter fare against missiles? I'm actually going to turn like this so that I don't accidentally hit with my other barrage. I only want to hit with one barrage at a time. So these are sacrificial nacelles, and as you can see, one hit destroys the nacelle entirely. But that one hit has protected your cockpit. Still living. Ah, finally. So you can see these guys can take a lot more missile fire. At least to the parts where we've armored. Obviously, if you come in from above... So. We'll have to talk about that later. Uh, now, in this case, I've accidentally already blown off one of the guns with the uh, uh, backwash from the missile hits. But if we come along to the side and we were to fire in like this what would be a fatal shot, instead just hits the guns. Obviously, you'd prefer not to lose your guns like that, but if you lose only one side, it's usually okay. Uh, as before, if you take a hit directly to the tip of your guns, you'll be pretty much fine. I mean, you'll lose the guns, but who cares? Uh, as I mentioned, the weak point is right here. Where is my pointer? Laser? Pointer? I can't see you. Oh, are we just too close? There we are. Right here. This whole area is weak. But it's still stronger than the glass cannon. Maybe it's not as weak as I thought it was. Come on, you're proving me wrong and you're making me look good. <laughs> hmm. That setup seems to work a lot better than I thought it would. Seems to have lost all of his. Uh, I think that I think that we did lose the cockpit. It's just that it didn't die. It just went into sparks. All right. So there you can see the basic idea. So if you're trying to design a fighter, just remember that your guns and your engines and your cargo pods, those are all armor. That's really all you have to remember. When you upgrade to something like a bomber or something that has a mission objective, where it has a mission piece of equipment that needs to actually be operational when you hit your objective, that's a different story. But in general, when you're talking about something like a fighter, guns are armor, engines are armor, cargo is armor, uh, gyroscopes, I wouldn't make them armor because you only have a couple of them, but they are very, very good armor if you can manage it because they are so heavy. Uh, how good something is as armor depends on its uh, components and the gyroscope is basically 900,000 tons of steel plates which makes it substantially more durable than heavy armor but it's also only a tiny little thing and it only has one connection point so I wouldn't recommend it oh yeah reactors um, you can make them armor but r reactors are kind of critical so most people don't one thing you can do if you download a mod like mine 
Come on, you. You can place your reactors with upgrade modules. And the upgrade modules make really excellent armor because it doesn't matter if they get destroyed. You'll see a degradation in performance, but your core reactor will still be fine. So in this case, you can see that my module here is in a position where it will protect me from low attack. So a missile coming in from this direction will either hit the foot or the upgrade module rather than anything critical. And the armor that I deleted also helped to that extent. And if you're coming in from the sides or from the back, the heavy upgrade modules will be help. All right, that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this, let me know. And if you have any philosophies, uh, you know, any design tips, definitely, definitely let me know because this is a space that most people haven't bothered to really think about very much. And most people tend to just throw their fighters together based on what looks good. Uh, I'm the sort of person who's perfectly happy creating something ugly as long as it can win. <laughs>